Hey, paddle enthusiasts, welcome to Paddle Smash Academy. My name is Sez, paddle club owner and entrepreneur. Next to me is Julian, paddle master coach, and we're all about paddle. Whether you're new to the sport or an experienced player, you've come to the right place. Our goal is to provide you with paddle news, tournament outcomes, product reviews, and video lessons to take your game to the next level. So grab your paddle and let's get started at Paddle Smash Academy. Hello everyone, welcome back to Paddle Smash Academy. Today we have an exciting, exciting podcast. We're gonna be talking about the top of the line, one of the the best, the best, okay? T-H-E, the best paddle club in Miami and probably the United States, the reserve. We had a pleasure to talk to uh, one of the, um, uh, what is it, marketing? I think she was a manager there, Erica. A manager, Erica, and um, Caesar will give you an... Uh, and we got the lowdown. Yes, the lowdown. The lowdown. All, all the information uh, at the reserve, because I think there's this big, like, uh, I don't know, a rumor, a lot of rumors, right? A lot of rumors, questions, this and that. And I think we talked about Reserve Paddle Club before, and that was you know and they've been changing so much changing their policies um you know and and i think they're they're going on the right track and so i got a lot of great information from her and i want to thank her uh number one and the club and i you know i'm really considering to be a member there because i just love their model um today we went over there and we saw uh uh, Diaz and Salingo playing there. Yeah. You know, it was well, Juan pretty, Martin Diaz was there playing. Yeah. Salingo was there playing. Yes. Uh, they were playing with Gabby and, and Willie. Incredible okay. to watch them there. Yeah. I mean, it's just, it's, it's pretty amazing. Yeah. So I think the first thing is, I think we went over price, right? It was a $5,000. Yeah, but le, le, let me say something. I yeah. just want to ask, this was my first time. I was just there today and it was my first time. It was mind blowing how that place it is. I mean, it is the best paddle club in the United States by far. I mean, it's such a beautiful, beautiful place. The view, the level of playing, the service, I mean, the food, the, the ambience. You want to stay there forever. Honestly, I had a, you know, when you walk into a place and you feel like you belong to it, that you want to stay there, you, you don't want to run away from it. That's the way I felt. I want you to stay there. I can stay there all day long, just watching great paddle. And they were doing lessons. They were doing clinics. They were doing uh, these, you know, top legends playing paddle next to us. And everybody was getting photos. Truly, truly an spectacular experience for me. So sorry to intrude that. Wow, wow Julian, you were pretty impressed. Yes. Huh? yes. I mean, you should have went there on Friday night. <laughs> you know, yeah, Wyclef was there. Oh, I really? Mean, yeah, they had an exhibition game. There. I mean, it was amazing. They had Ex a DJ from Excellent. Brazil. It was a music week here in Miami. Unbelievable. You missed out. Yeah. You know? Well, now he's going to be a member, so might as well. I'm going to start going more yeah, often. Yeah, yeah, you'll be my... And be you can my... give us the, the juicy thing oh, yeah. that is happening there. Definitely. So we're going to do that right now and give you some more information. So I think we went over this last time. It is $5,000. But uh, it is a pop-up, you know, a uh, business kind of a club meet, which means that, you know, they temporarily have that space. Um, it doesn't mean that until j end of June, but it doesn't mean that that's it. You know, they are obviously, you know, reapplying uh, to be there for another six months or another year, which is most likely going to happen. I think it all depends on what they're doing with that location, if the owners will eventually sell it or not. But uh, I assume it's going to get extended. Um, hopefully it does. But they're, you know, they've been working on another location uh, that's going to be in two, come on 2024, a little bit up north. So I think this is kind of like the tryout and they're kind of building their members um, for that club. But uh, we're hoping that this club here in reserve is going to extend up to 2024 um, until they have their, their new club up north. Um, so that's kind of what I got from it. Um, again, it's $5,000. And if you have a, a spouse, you can add them on there with no additional cost. Okay, which is great. They have yoga and they have all these events every other week. They have a, uh, a league uh, there as well. So as a member, uh, you get 20% off. Okay, um, uh, the courts, uh, you're able uh, to play in court one and two, which is only offered to the members. Um, you're also offered to, to you know, co be coached by um, the two top coaches there, Will and, and, and Gabby. Um, so these are all kind of the 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 benefits that, that you have as being a member. 
Um, I think their plan is to be more specific on who they want as members and get a certain amount of members and not, you know, uh, not get too many members where the members won't be able to benefit. You know, Let me, let's talk cool. about prices. So how much is it for for a core time and all that? So the core time, I believe she says 150, right? 150 yep. for an hour and a half, an hour and a half. And then you get 20 percent off. Yeah, but she said something that is for an hour. They that was a hundred dollars, a hundred dollars for an hour. Yeah. So and then you get 20 percent off if you're a member. OK, but okay. You, you can reserve a court for an hour or and a half because we would on the rest it, of the places is hour and a half. It, it, I believe that they tell us an hour just so it seems a little bit less. But it's really you're reserving a court for an hour and a okay. half. So they, when you call, it's an hour and a half always. Yeah, yeah, OK. Yep. And then, uh, yeah. So, so how much is it for an hour and a half? 150. 150 for three people. And then. OK. It, well, for four people. Four people. Course. I'm sorry. And then you get 20 percent off if you're a member. OK. So, which which is not bad. I mean, no. it's, it's it's pretty reasonable. Uh, that the trick is that you invest that type of money um, for three, or f- let's say three months, you know, because you know, it is a pop up business, so it may end in June, uh, or you invest in it, you know, hoping that they're going to continue to the end of the year, which I assume is going to happen. You know, what are other benefits do they have? I mean, they focus on the social aspect of it, and I saw that going there. I mean, I saw these professional players there. I mean, they're accessible there. You know, these great, um, you know, coaches. Um, you know, a lot of affluent people are playing there. You know, I mean, this is a, a great club for that. You know, um, so if you're looking to be social, um, you know, they, they have, you know, they're constantly doing events. Uh, yes. I was there last Friday. I mean, it was a great event. I mean, they had an exhibition game. Um, they had a DJ there from Brazil. Uh, that DJ at the Ultra, um, you know, they had a couple celebrities there. Um, it was it was great, and and they, you know, you're able to go even as a non-member. You just have to register, you know. But of course, they give they offer that to members first, uh, and then afterwards they allow other people to come in as long as you register. You said something very interesting that you became a member for for another aspect too, which is networking yeah you know networking i mean all the people the feeling that i got today when i went there it's these high very influential people high earners people that you know they're doing big things here in the miami area in the united states so that could be also a yes. good the five thousand dollars is sort of like Definitely. the entry gate to networking with high influential people opening up doors for opening up opening up doors and, and i think that's the, that's their market that's yeah. what they're looking for yeah you know? I, I i something that happens to me when i was there well you you were talking to erica um one guy finished playing on one of the courts right in front of me and i was just looking at it and um he wanted to take a shower and he said uh erica said oh you can go and take a shower at uh, wayne's yacht which it was parked right there next to the water so he went to take a shower on wow. wayne's the owner private yacht who was parked right there next to the club so that's a good park too you know what i mean yeah, you can yeah. you can take a shower I on mean, the on the owner's yacht i mean private there, yacht. there's no guarantee you can take a shower on owner's yacht julian <laughs> no 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 <laughs> but you never know if you're you never playing know with him, you might i'm sure he it. i'm sure he was a good friend but it was funny when i hear it and said oh okay well his yacht is parked right there and he's taking it's, a shower there very cool of him man yeah exactly cool that, that very, was pretty cool. cool yeah definitely you know yeah <laughs> I'll so bring, the- i'll bring my clothes next time, like, just in case <laughs> just in case we can take a shower in his yacht I don't know if he's yeah. an open, you know, public bathroom or a public shower facility, but they, they you don't know. they don't have a shower there because again, this is kind of a pop up. I think if they get an extended uh, permit there for at least a year or, or two years or at least up to 2024, I believe that they'll probably do something, yeah. you know. But this is a pop up, so they're not they're not they're not sure how long it's going to be there uh, for. I mean, and they have other things like I said, yoga and the events that they have. I mean, up this. This week they're having these events uh, with professional players. They got Chingota playing there, Diaz. You know, then they you're got kidding all- me, really? Yeah. Well, everyone might as well. If you're here in Miami, come over. You and, know. And there's and, and if you they allow on the website to register to some of these events and for free. So We're gonna put to, the link right below. You, you, to you know, very, for you to you register. Have to be very quick. And the other thing too that Erica told me, which was really nice, is that you know you can just come in there. You don't have to be a member, right? You can go in as long as you are going to uh, uh, Vida, what is it called? Pura Vida. Pura Vida, which, which uh, I believe sub there from them. 
uh, and order something, you can just sit down and watch, you know, the games there. Yes. Um, so you don't necessarily have to be a member to come in. I mean, you can go to Pura Vida, order something, and you can sit there, eat, and watch some of the games, and just enjoy the, the, the area. And let me, for next, so it's this weekend, we're going to have that exciting. I think it's this week. It starts yeah. Wednesday. Wednesday, Thursday, yeah. Friday, Saturday. So, it, you know, I'll, I'll invite you. Make sure to watch There you go. The I'm, I love it. And for you guys, I mean, if you guys are in the Miami area, I, I'm going to give you the perfect racket sports plan. Saturday and Sunday, semifinals and finals of the Miami Open. 20 minutes from here, or maybe half hour from here. And on your spare time, you can come and watch at the reserve, unbelievable paddle playing by the top professionals in the world. Yeah. Doesn't get any better than that. Paddle and tennis on the same on the same weekend, wow. it's gonna be unbelievable. Yeah, yeah it's pretty awesome. Huh? So come over, check it out. <laughs> I'll be going, so he's going too. Right, right, yeah, definitely, I'm there, man. Well, we had some bunch of questions, right, from yes. our viewers. So um, we're gonna go over that, you know, today. Basic question, which is, I get it quite often from, from my students. What is the most underrated shot in paddle? I think we both agreed on that. We right? both agree on that. That's <laughs> going to be the lob, man. The lob is the most underrated it's, shot. It's the most boring, right? But it's the most effective. Yes. I mean, it, it, you can use it any times when you're in a tight situation or your partner's out of position. Lob it gives you yes. time, right? If you got people attacking that that net, you, you don't have to risk doing an, a, a you know a, a, a difficult shot. Oh, you could do a lob. Yes. You know, uh, there's you know that's one of the best shots, but underrated for sure. Look in, in paddle. You have to master the, the lob, period. And in paddle, we have three different types of lobs. So that's why. And there is also a proper technique for the lobs. So that's why it's not just hitting a lob, hitting the ball up, but know where to hit it, hit it with a purpose. And there is a proper technique. That's why it's so important for you to take lessons in paddle. You know, one is called the rainy lob or, or, or jovido is the one that goes really, really high and you see the the, the professional place and it comes straight straight uh, straight straight down and and it's very difficult to hit the other one is the fast lob the other one is the one with backspin on it so there, there are certain lobs that you have to master but it has to be the most underrated shot in tennis it's always the last resource shot and you don't really train it or anything i mean right. you don't but in paddle you have to train the lob yeah. okay and that's why is the most underrated shot in, in, in our case. You know, I think we should do a video lesson on, on the lot, yeah, right? Yeah, definitely. We should, we should do a, a video lesson on know. it. So uh, the next one, uh, well, I have one, quite a few, but uh, I think one, this one is going to go up to you. If I want to open a paddle club, what should I be the, smart, what should be the smartest approach? Oof, that's a tough one. Uh, I think that all depends on if uh, you have financial backing or if you're doing it yourself um you know if you're just doing it yourself i would you know probably uh do the least amount of possible so you can get your R R R -E -O, uh, and return on investment back very quickly um if you do have investors and you have other verticals of revenue i mean then you can do something a little bit better um, but i guess it all depends uh, on that but if i were you um i would focus on uh, how much my fixed cost would be if you can own the asset it would be better, you know, the land uh, and then maybe do something um, not enclosed, you know, something very uh, the least amount as possible and start with three or four courts, depending on where you are. If you have to educate, uh, you know, the people in that area, then start with three, three courts uh, and make sure you can add another two uh, if you, or three if you if you can. Um, so that's kind of what I would suggest. I mean, I think we did a whole podcast on courts. Yes, uh, and, I, and I think another aspect of that is location. Location, I think, is very important. You know, yes. you can you can be in the middle of nowhere and you won't get any traffic. Right. My suggestion when I do consulting for for clubs and upcoming clubs, it's I suggest them to do at least a minimum of six courts for the simple reason that if you want to run programs and you, if you want to monetize it, then obviously the more courts, the more money you will make. Uh, or, or you will generate. Uh, so there are different aspects to it, but like he said, you know, or maybe do a hybrid type of thing that go indoor and outdoors will be also very important. I think that's a smarter way to go. Yeah. So for instance, if you're in an area which nobody knows paddle, you, you're not going to put 12 paddle courts. But let's just say in the area people know pickle. So you may want to do three paddle courts and maybe three pickle courts, you know? And then kind of convert those pickle players into paddle. Yeah. And then convert those pickle courts back back into the paddle. Correct. Um, if you're in an area which people already know paddle, 
then you know you could put up 12 quarts and you're probably going to do a decent job filling them so it, it all depends uh, like like you said and the location yeah you know um we, location where nobody knows about paddle location where people do know about paddle so uh, but if again if you're going to do it on your own uh you know if you're in new england or an area where it's not always warm um you as long as you probably get a good you probably lose maybe two months but your cost of to do something in indoor in, indoors and the time you know is too long and the return on investment is too long uh unless again you have um you know investors or other other verticals of revenue I exactly mean, uh subleasing or or having uh, uh, subleasing to many people in, in, in that facility is another form of... of yeah, you know, the verticals could be uh, offer yoga classes, uh, fitness rooms, uh, yeah. other sorts of revenue. Workout I mean, areas. Yeah, yeah the, the food and beverage uh, option, it's, it's mm -hmm. always very, very uh, rewarding because you can make some good money in alcohol and, mm -hmm. and, and food. Uh, so, but yeah, it's, it's, it has to be a whole package. It's not just paddle, mm -hmm. but you know, create that community where they come to the club and, and they feel welcome and, and they have different options. And it depends on your model, too. I mean, you know, you may go with, you know, owning the asset, you know, the, 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 the property. Yeah. And developing the company, getting a certain EBITDA and then selling it and then creating some passive income. Yeah. I mean, that's another model to look at. And that's kind of how I look at, yeah. <laughs> at paddle, um, you know, because I love paddle. It's more of a passion thing. But you... You know, it, it's really tough if you're in an area where the, the price per square feet is so high, it doesn't make financial sense to do a, a paddle court. It just just doesn't, you know. Um, so you have to kind of be careful. Um, I mean, you look at areas like uh, here in Miami and also even in New York, paddle yeah. house. I mean, it's so expensive and it has to be because uh, the price per square foot is so expensive. Well, one of the things that is happening is very interesting and it's happening not only here in the United States, but all over the world. Now paddle cores are going up. And what, what I mean by that, they're going to uh, rooftops. You know, there are many, many places that they have parking lots where the top floor in the parking lot is always the empty one. And now they are leasing or, or they're, they're buying those sun roof, you know, sun, uh, rooftops so and they're building cores there because now you, ha you have no more land to build cords. Yeah. So now you're going up. And that's a very, it's happening in Abu Dhabi, it's happening yeah. in, in, in Europe, where now they're building courts. We still have courts in the past, tennis courts and sun, roo and sun uh, uh, rooftops and same thing, uh, soccer fields and, and football fields. And, and a lot of these areas, if you can prove that those aren't being used, exactly. you can easily get a variance for it. Yeah. You know? So that's an interesting concept, you know, for you guys to be looking around. So one, I mean, we can go on this for for hours. I mean, <laughs> yeah. you know, what will be yeah. the right combination and all that, but the potential is there. The, the love for the sport is there and it's going to keep on growing and growing and growing. So all right, what do we got next? What next, got? how do you respond if your opponent puts you on the fridge every ooh, single time? Ooh. And this is a tough one that everybody struggles. When we play, they always put me in the fridge, right? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so and, and here's here's the best thing that I tell all my students. You know what I mean? Paddle is very strategic, right? Mm -hmm. So and always hitting the cross court shot is always the easiest shot. So let's say I'm playing with with CSS and and they're hitting everything to him. So I'm I'm, I'm just sitting there getting cold and, and no really hitting any balls. So the moment he starts hitting down the line, either lobs or hitting down the line, now you're making the opponent who's receiving that shot down the line. It's he's obligated to go across curve because always that's the easiest shot for him to do. So that's one of the things that you have to really learn when you're not getting so much play on it because now they're getting smarter, they're playing to the weaker, weaker player. Yep. Now tell your, 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 your partner to start hitting more down the line. And automatically that momentum will shift to you because that, the cross court shot will always be the safest shot to, to hit. That, that, that's a great that's yeah that's, that's a great tip yeah you know, the other thing too is if you're in a if you're in a fridge um it don't don't get go cold you know you got to bounce and pretend like you're hitting that ball because yes. they're waiting for you to get yeah. you know cold and then they're going to hit it to you and you're going to make them force error yeah so the, you know they get three four shots pretend you're bouncing you're pretending you're in rhythm you're pretending you're hitting that ball and so that way when they do hit it to you you, you'll be less likely to make an error. Correct. Error, so. And try to be more active, especially on the net. Try to poach more onto the other side, especially depends on what size you're playing. But it's crucial for you to 
play more the strategic and then play with your partner more in the strategic you know aspect of of the game mm-hmm. by just your partner changing the direction of, of going down the line which is a little bit more risky automatically the opponents will will have to tend to move to the crossword so side this is, we're talking about you being on the left side right so yes. you're going to be hitting you, you're not you're getting all the balls i'm not you're going to be hitting the 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 ball to the person uh, on the other side which would be playing also the the left right no in the, mid, in the middle but a little bit over. i'm playing on the left right right so i'm going to be hitting down the line to the forehand side or the opposite side right so 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 that way he can get he, he can, can get, get either me. exactly gotcha, gotcha gotcha so he will go either to the middle cross court and now especially if it's deep because exactly. it's very hard to turn yeah so i mean because i mean a, a, a forehand down the line will be much more risky than right. for me to go right to the great middle great advice great advice so that will be the best 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 uh option for you guys to that always hit with a purpose and um, what i mean by that it's placing the shot placing to the weaker player but if the weaker players start playing smarter you know that's how you change the dynamics of getting outside the you know outside the, the freezing zone that's what we call it right right all right what else do we have anything else I, I think well, i mean we have quite a, a few options but we'll we'll leave more questions for for a net podcast because we can be talking here forever thanks for tuning in to paddle smash academy we hope you find our videos informative and helpful in improving your game and learning all things paddle and if you haven't already make sure that you hit that subscribe button and turn on the notification so you never miss a video from us. So until next time, keep practicing, keep improving, and keep on smashing that paddle. See you in the court.